Jim Richards is one of the doyens of Australian motor racing. He'll be trying for his sixth Bathurst victory this weekend, and he's also won the Touring Car Championship four times. But at an age when other drivers are hanging up their racing helmets, Jim Richards is enjoying the sport too much to give it away. He's talking here to Neil Bowes. Bathurst on October 5, you'll be aiming for number six. How do you rate your chances? Well, I think very, very good. We've, uh, we've had a good lead-up throughout the Super Touring season, and uh, the cars proved to be ultra-reliable. I mean, the, the, we haven't had a mechanical problem with the car well, for the last two or three years. So, so now we're quietly confident. Uh, a bit of local knowledge will go a long way. I think um, our driver pairings are very, very good. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm quite confident. And you're sharing a car with uh, Ricard Rydell, who's been campaigning very successfully in the English touring car season. That must give you some heart for, uh, for the race. Well, it does. Uh, the, the actual car that we're driving is the car that Ricard drove in 1996. So he'll be well versed with the car. And uh, the car is probably a slightly better spec or a slightly faster car than we've currently been running. So although um, our opposition may have to detune a little bit to, to go the distance, you might say, uh, we'll probably have a car that's slightly quicker than one we've already got. So uh, that's a little bit in our favour. You'd be regarded, uh, I guess, as a venerable gentleman of the, uh, the motor racing uh, fraternity these days. There's yourself, Brocky, uh, Dick Johnson, all now, shall we say, topping the half century. Do you think there's still room to teach some of the young guns a few tricks? Well, I think the young guns now are sort of virtually teaching themselves at, uh, at a younger age probably than when we first started ourselves. So, I mean, I think the, uh, the opportunity is there for the young guys to, to start coming on. And, and they've probably got a few more I have to say, um, levers in the door now than what we had when we were young. Uh, I probably didn't really start most of my really competitive driving until I was probably in my mid-30s. Uh, nowadays, the young guys are in their early 20s and they're competing against us equally. But I think that you, you don't really lose your skill. Uh, you might lose your commitment, we'll say. But while you've got that commitment and uh, while you enjoy driving, there's no reason why you can't be competitive uh, well into your 50s. So you're not planning at this stage anyway to do a brocky and, and call it a day? No, no, I'm not. I, I, I said to Pete the other day, I said, I th think you retired far too early, but uh, Pete's got other things on his agenda and um, that was his decision. But no, I'm not planning to retire for a while yet. We were talking about the young guys. We've got Mark Webber at the moment racing Formula 3 in England. Craig Lowndes racing Formula 3 also. Uh, a young guy who's just won his uh, second World Karting Championship. Which one of those drivers would you expect to see as perhaps Australia's next Formula One racer? Well, I think it's very, very difficult for anyone, I suppose, from our neck of the woods, you might say, to get into Formula One. But, of course, the guy that does make it is going to be the, going to be the guy that's obviously got talent and talent enough to get into that, uh, those sort of cars and be competitive. But, unfortunately, in Formula One now, it's not talent that gets you there. It's, uh, it's lots of money. Um, I think if you've got two young guys, one with lots of talent and a little money, and one with a lot of money and a little talent, the second will be the first one there. Now, uh, having said that, I think there is room, and I think people do look at drivers and say, now this man has, or this boy has got a lot of talent, not a lot of natural ability, let's give him a chance. Again, talking about young drivers, your own son Stephen is racing in the Bathurst, in a Nissan, and you've raced against Stephen often enough over the, the last few years. Was that a conscious decision on your part to support his racing career, or would he have done it anyway? No, Steve really probably was a, was a reasonably late starter when it came to motorsport, only because he sort of was around the family uh, from when he was born virtually, and it was motorsport. That was, that was my, uh, my job, my income, and of course he probably took it a bit for granted. So he was more into cricket, football, soccer in his younger days. He didn't actually have a drive of a, of a cart until he was about 14 years old. And then when he drove one, I thought, gee, was this is pretty good stuff. Then he decided to... Uh, to go down that track, but he, he's done it the right way. He started in cars, went to Formula Ford, uh, then the, the touring cars. And I think you've got to decide at a young age whether you want to physically try and go to be, be to get into Formula One, uh, which a lot of guys have that dream. But you've also got to be realistic. If you want to enjoy your motorsport and you want, if you want to be in motorsport for a fair while, um, touring cars is a good place to be in Australia because uh, all Australia loves touring cars. And it doesn't matter what class it is. Uh, there's always drives and always jobs to be had in touring cars. Which brings me to the next obvious question, and that's the split in the touring car ranks this year with the V8s in one circus and the two-litre tourers in another. In your opinion, is that good for Australian motor racing? No, the split and the division in the sport, I, th I think, has been the worst year ever for the sport. I think it's uh, not only, you could say, turned uh, the fans 
um, against each other's sport or, or, or class that they like, but it's turned probably sponsors and probably competitors against each other too. And when I say against you, know, I don't mean in a, in a, uh, a nasty way, I just mean in a, in a verbal way and, and people are sort of taking up the, uh, the causes for the, the Super Tourers or the V8s. I just think it's doing the sport a great deal of harm. I think that we should be working together. There's enough room in the country for both classes. We have a Holden Ford category in the V8. There should be an outlet for the likes of Volvo, Audi, BMW, Nissan, Toyota, uh, and Ford Holden or whatever. We, we need a class that allows more manufacturers into it because obviously manufacturers bring money. Can the two coexist? Can they draw enough support, crowd support, sponsor support, to keep going? I believe that they should, they can coexist, having their own classes, their own races, but I believe personally they should be on the same program on the same day and give the fans the, the best motorsport on a weekend, have the V8s, the Super Tourers and the best classes on the one weekend. To me that makes sense, that makes, uh, gives the opportunity for say 25, 30,000 people to watch all the best drivers in the best cars in different classes on the same weekend. That includes sports tourers, super sports, open wheelers, the full range of programs. Yes, you know, people may say, oh, no, that, that can't be done, but I just feel that if you're going to give the fans what they want, you give them the best circus to watch. And I think the best circus would be to have the super tourers and the V8s on the same car and on the same card.